Welcome to The Strategic Investor. Join us as we interview some of the world's most productive asset managers and uncover sophisticated and unique investment strategies in the markets. Here is your host, Charlie Wright. Hello and welcome to Strategic Investor Radio on OC Talk Radio, where we bring you investment strategies you are not hearing elsewhere. Thank you for joining us today, and we'd like to welcome, as our guest for the very first time, Javad Ansari, Managing Director at Bowstead Securities and Bowstead Capital Partners, located in Irvine, California, central uh, uh, center of the world for us. They're an investment banking firm focused on the middle market, and uh, Javad is here with us in the studio. Javad, welcome to Strategic Investor Radio. Great. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. So, Javad, uh, we need to start with a disclosure here required by the regulators. You are a managing director at Bowstead Securities, a FINRA and SEC registered broker dealer and an investment banking firm. Also, uh, you're a managing partner at Bowstead Capital Partners, a registered investment advisory firm. So, uh, Javad, uh, your background is on the buy side in running family offices and multifamily offices for a couple of decades, although you don't look that <laughs> old here. Uh, now you're on the sell side in the investment banking world with Bowstead, focused on primarily technology and real estate. So let's start with a little of your background here. Yeah, no, no thanks. Uh, thanks, Charlie. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, speak to you and your listeners. You know, my, my background started in late 90s um, in uh, the family office world, and from uh, a single family office, we built it to a uh, multifamily office and managed uh, the wealth of some of the most prominent uh, individuals and families in Orange County. And uh, we had um, the venture capital firms and other um, investment funds underneath the family offices. So. Um, uh, it's been a great ride, and then uh, uh, several years ago, after the exits, uh, switched over to the sell side, and now been part of uh, Baustet. So uh, it's just a, just a great, great, amazing journey. Thank you. So tell us about Baustet. So Baustet uh, Securities is a FINRA SEC registered broker dealer with offices in uh, California, China, and UK. Uh, we have offices both in uh, Southern California as well as in Northern California. And we are uh, about 35 managing directors and uh, 40 registered professionals. Uh, we provide uh, uh, capital formation and advisory services in most of the industries that you can think of, uh, including uh, technology, real estate, energy, uh, so and so forth. Uh, we have been very active in the IPO market, the NASDAQ global markets. So we have uh, uh, been uh, consistently advising clients uh, in their uh, initial public offerings, as well as uh, M&As and uh, private growth capital raises. So, um, yeah, I mean, we've been we've been growing pretty uh, pretty aggressively. So, uh, as I understand the uh, investment banking world, and again, we're typically focused on the retail investing world on this show and in my life, but uh, you guys take companies who want or need to raise capital, and you find investors for them. Uh, yes, most institutional investors. Okay, yes. so mo many of our listeners may not be very familiar with the institutional investment marketplace, so briefly describe us and oh, describe absolutely. it and tell us about it, will you? Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, institutional investors investors are actually very critical component to the overall capital formation uh, equation for any company as well as for a fund uh, that is looking to increase its uh, asset center management. The type of uh, uh, institutional investors that we come across and then we work with uh, mostly are pension funds. Uh, these are your CalPERS and CalSTRS, which is really California pension funds, as well as, um, uh, you know, different states have their own uh, pension funds. The second type is the, uh, the foundations. Uh, so the most prominent uh, one or one of the most prominent ones would be uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Then you have endowments. Uh, the Yale Endowment is a very prominent and very active investor in a lot of these uh, 
but in, in a lot of investments, in a lot of different types of investments, as well as the insurance companies. So these are the, the, the most prominent ones. Uh, so again, pensions, foundations, endowments, insurance companies, uh, but also most of the companies, the corporates uh, in, the, in the industry also have a very strong need to invest in innovation and to be at the forefront of the innovation because they, 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 they don't want any, um, any upcoming uh, trend technology to, to basically uh, put them at a disadvantage. So you have companies all the way f- from Alphabet, which is you know, the parent company for Google, Amazon, Microsoft all have their corporate venture capital arms. These are um, these are a group of investors working for the companies that are they're investing off of the balance sheet of these uh, the parent companies. Some of them have a carved out piece of the um, the balance sheet, like Google Ventures, but most of them are working directly from the balance sheet. So, uh, Javad, uh, I, I was at a, a conference at UCLA earlier this year and heard the head of their, the executive director of their endowment fund. And then uh, just a few weeks ago, I was at uh, San Francisco to attend a hedge fund conference, and there were several public pension plan managers at that who were on a panel and mm-hmm. spoke throughout the, the conference. And the message from both of those, from the UCLA and from uh, these others, uh, public pension plans, were that, one, they have to make a good 7% per year because exactly. they are required to pay these pension uh, disbursements. And number two, they do not currently have the confidence in the public markets exactly. that they can earn what they need to earn and they're you know to pay out the 7%. And then number 3, they say that years ago this 7% was not difficult because you could do that in the fixed income marketplace. Exactly. Today you have to take on higher risk in order to pay out 7%. So many of them say, have said they're looking more at the private marketplace, private credit, private equity, uh, private real estate, etc., because they don't see that the public markets are going to give it to them. Do you find that same uh, thing? Absolutely. I mean, I think you have several different dynamics that are going on. First of all, the companies are going public at a much, much later stage. So, for example, if you think about Nike, Nike went public in the 80s at a $50 million uh, market cap. It's a $90 billion plus. So the wealth formation from $50 million to Ninety billion was in the hands of the public, so that's where you got the the higher return. Uh, Compare that to the IPO of Facebook at fifty billion and about five hundred billion, it's just ten x, right? So the wealth formation was not in the hands of general public or in the public market. So that's really why you cannot have that kind of consistent risk adjusted. 7% in the public market on a, an, on a long-term basis. Um, and you have to turn to private equity, which is really more of a longer-term uh, risk capital. And uh, we're seeing that all over the board. That's why um, you know, the, the allocations that these institutional investors have, pensions, foundations, endowments, insurance companies, continue to increase for the private equity and private real estate allocations at the cost of uh, cutting back on hedge funds. So hedge funds are especially traditional hedge funds, you know, and that's a whole different topic. But 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 we just quickly talk about it. That, you know, the the hedge funds are as you're seeing a lot of hedge funds are going out of business, and that's because the the old model of two guys sitting in front of a computer and trading is actually is going away. I think the quant base, black yeah. box base, algo driven with deep learning, that's really the future. That's really is the future of uh, of hedge funds. And we're seeing and we're working with and we're in discussion with several of them, especially in the uh, uh, in Silicon Valley, where these guys are the disruptors of the of tomorrow. But until that becomes mainstream, private equity um, and venture capital and uh, private equity real estate are really the places where these guys are investing because they actually invest um, out of necessity. I mean, these guys don't invest because they like to invest. These guys have, if they don't invest and they don't really generate the returns, these companies would not, most likely, not going to be a going concern. 
Yeah. Uh, and Javad, uh, speaking of uh, uh, quantitative uh, analysis, uh, quants, um, a conference that I attended recently, another conference I attended recently, had a panel that said uh, of hedge funds, today everybody's a quant. Yeah. And so they, they, that has just taken it over. So you guys have venture capital, primarily private equity opportunity companies who come to you, and then you take them to potential investors. What do you look for in evaluating a company to bring to your network investors? Because you can't be wrong too many times, right? <laughs> Otherwise, your credibility is gone, and you won't have additional opportunities. Absolutely. That door will no longer be open. Absolutely. Okay, so so what do you look for in a company? That's a really good question, Charlie. That's really the the, the question. So, you know, what we're looking at is we look at companies the same way as the investor would do. I mean, and that's really my background of, you know, decade and a half on the buy side is really critical because I invested in over 100 venture capital private equity funds through my investment firms and uh, on behalf of my clients. What we, we really do is is really understand the secret sauce, understand what makes them generate these outsized returns. Are these returns, or even if these are not outsized returns, but are these consistently generated returns? If they are, what we do is we try to understand how much of this alpha generation is due to the team effort uh, and how much is it just pure luck. I mean, it, it, luck has a lot to do with it. We, we're not going to take that away, but, but, but really understanding that is very critical. We, we we try to understand the team. We try to understand the uh, the team dynamics because one of the one of the issues that happens in a small team environment like a venture capital or private equity uh, firm is really um, partners um, falling out. I mean, basically, they're not able to you know effectively work with each other. Right, so we look for longevity in terms of how they have worked together in the past. You know, the chemistry, also how they make decisions in terms of, uh, you know, really, you know, it's uh, investing is up and down, right? I mean, it's not always green. So, you know, how do they react in terms of, you know, in making tough decisions, um, and do a lot of reference checks, uh, not only from their prior investors, but also. Uh, from the companies that they invested in. How are they to work with? Are they help- helpful? People that actually have worked with them as, as a peer, as a co-investor. So what we try to do is really try to understand and really try to get an idea of how would it be to work with these guys on a long-term basis as a partner ourselves. So we put ourselves as a partner in these situations and and, and really try to understand their, their, their because we represent and we work with institutional investors we understand the level of their thinking and the process they go through to uh, review a deal and also to invest in a deal. So, you know, what kind of checks and balances do they have? Is it just one guy or one person making decisions or is it an institutionalized process? If it's not, we try to we try to suggest a, an institutional process where you actually have a committee review and and when do you exit from those positions in like in a private equity fund so we focus on really helping the company in this case a fund craft those processes because the institutional investors require them. You know, Javad, that reminds me, years ago I was reading a, a magazine no longer exists uh, called Success Magazine. At least that Success Magazine was different. And this guy used to write a column that I really enjoyed. And one of his articles, I have remembered ever since this was 20 plus years ago, he said that people typically think that a new venture is successful because they have a great idea. He says, having invested in so many of them, I can tell you that's not the case. The idea is not the most important thing. The most important thing, he said, is execution. It's all Do right. they know how to execute? And that's exactly what you're saying here. Exactly. I mean, if you look at just, you know, very simple uh, examples. I mean, Google was in the first search engine, right? Right. I mean, Facebook was in the first social networking site. Yeah. But it's the execution. And that, ex- I mean, Amazon was in the, isn't the only online shop. But Amazon is the biggest. Google slash Alphabet right. it is. Facebook. It's about you know constant execution and quality control and really sticking to the core fundamentals. 
So if you think about it, that you can expand, but you got to do your core business flawlessly. Yep. So even though Amazon is going in and doing buying Whole Foods, but I can still go and you know do anything and everything I was doing you know ten years ago on Amazon now flawlessly, a lot faster. I can get my you know items in two hours. So you cannot let your core business you know get impacted because you're growing. So. So, Javad, uh, we need to take a break here. This is very interesting. When we come back, let's talk about the key elements that you find that make a deal work. Sounds good. Again, we're talking with Javad Ansari, Managing Director of Bowstead Securities. You're listening to Strategic Investor Radio on OC Talk Radio, and we'll be right back. Welcome back again. This is Charlie Wright, and we're talking with Brian Goligoski, founder, CEO of Stillwater Capital out of Santa Barbara. Brian, for those who may not be familiar with Stillwater Capital, give us 20 seconds here. So we are a registered investment advisor focused on both the big picture, but also we focus heavily on alternative investments, specifically hedged equity strategies that try to take advantage of disconnects in the market. What do your clients get that others don't get elsewhere? In hedge strategies, specifically how we offer them in a liquid, transparent form, they get exposure to the markets, but they also have downside protection vis-a-vis the short-selling aspect of it. It's hard to come by, and we think we do a pretty good job at it. Yeah, long short uh, is a challenging place. It has not done well over the past few years. What do you see moving forward with long short? Part of the challenge with long short is everybody been running on a relatively low net exposure. We don't do that. We can run at a high net long or a reasonably aggressive short. So our idea is that we're going to try to take advantage of situations like we have right now where there probably is a decent chance of some air pockets out there. And we're trying to find individual companies that are facing some headwinds that aren't priced into the market. And you used to uh, run the long short fund for Nuveen, correct? Correct. I ran a mutual fund for Nuveen for four years from inception to the end of 2012. I've been doing some form of this since 1996 when I first entered the business when I worked for Mark Strom at Strom Investment Management. Okay, so uh, you also write a newsletter this week in the markets. How can people get that? You can contact us by sending an email to contact at stillcap.com. That's S-T-I-L-L-C-A-P.com, and we'll sign you up. It's a Friday piece, a little top-down, bottom-up, and send you on your way with some happy diversions. Hey, Brian, thank you very much for joining us today, and best of luck to all of us with productive investing. Indeed. Thank you, Charlie. All right, and back to Charlie and his guest. Thank you, Paul. Again, we're talking with Javad Ansari, Managing Director of Bowstead Securities. So, Javad, uh, you've seen many, many, many deals, okay? Uh, sales, okay, M&A, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The IPOs, et cetera. What are the key elements that make a deal work? You know, I think that's a that's a really uh, important point. The the deal could be, as you said, could be an IPO deal, it could be an M and A uh, transaction, it could be a growth capital. Let's just talk about you know one of each really briefly, and some of the, the some of the attributes are overlapping. But for for the most part, uh, if you look at it, the growth capital formation. I think a lot of the a lot of the uh, investors out there they're looking for opportunities where they have the solid management. You know the product is still being phased out, and really the new 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 product uh, cycle is coming on. Uh, that's pretty much the case. You kind of gone through your um, beta version, and you hopefully you have already done your alpha beta, and you're already in your. Uh, first commercial launch, and um, then you have your um, your second um, product coming out. Um, it's still a little bit too early to kind of use uh, DCF or any other revenue-driven model to value the company. So the most important part is to make the deal work is really have the management team um, and, and really the, the founders and, and management team combine at, at, at the top of their game. So, um, you know, they have to have the clean background, um, you know, make sure we, we run all the uh, the background searches on these guys. Last thing investors want is a surprise uh, in the background of one of these investors. And uh, for, for you know, our, our, our impression is that FINRA and SEC going forward are going to require more disclosures on that as well. So the, the management, the integrity of management is really the most important part. So you got to make sure that your management team is unquestionable. 
then the most important thing that works is really your customers. Your customers are really the selling point. So, you know, even though you may have your first, second, or third、um, product out,、uh, your customers should be the ones talking about your product. So, one of the reference calls I made on a company、uh, about a couple months ago after I got done with my questions,、um, I asked the、uh, CEO of the company, the potential customers, like, what, 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 what do you want me to communicate to the company? And say, Get me the product. I can't wait to have more products. So, wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a really good endorsement. On the MA side, I think really the most important thing is understanding the value that you bring to the acquirer. Most of the cases, we work on the sell side, so we're working with the companies that are getting acquired.、Um, so, it's really ability to work in a fashion that understands that the buyer or the acquirer is buying it for expansion and work with them and, and really just. Just be accommodating in terms of the terms that,、uh, that, that are being offered. And、uh, as an investment banker, that's what we do with the company. We bring the, the normalcy and really the market intelligence to the table. We can bring the insights in terms of what is normal, what, is、really、the, uh, the, the, what are the going terms right now in the industry, and we can, we can navigate,、uh, help navigate、uh, the client.、Um, so it's not just a good deal, that they also need、uh, the direction and help of people. Have been through this before. Exactly. You know, there's a very common saying in our industry you said the price, I said the terms. <laughs> right? So it's all in the terms. Yeah.、Um, yeah. And that's really where we come in. We help, help the company go through the, the, the terms and help, you know, sort of decide on the terms that they can live with、yeah. and、uh, they would be happy with because, you know, we don't want to,、uh, our companies to get priced out of market. And、right. at the same time, we don't want them to leave you know, money on the table. So,、right. so Javad,、uh, you've been through many, many of these、uh, particular projects and situations. What have you found, briefly, tell us, what have you found to be the common mistakes or unreal、uh, expectations that are、uh, not correct and accurate here in looking for funding? Yeah, that,、uh, you know, that's re- really unfortunate that a lot of companies don't really realize how important transparency is. Uh, they think if they can hide it, it'll go away. It just never does. You and I both know that, Charlie. I think the most important part is that if there is anything out there that the other side should know, disclose, overly disclose, get it out. And that helps you know, make sure that the transaction is going to go smoothly. Number one. Number two, it helps. Establish your credibility and rapport. And number three is really the,、um, w- the, the companies don't, some of the companies that don't make it or, or really are not there, they don't really understand the necessity for hustle. So you have to hustle to get the customers, right? So you have to work hard on not only getting the customers, but serving the customers. And,、uh, and really, it's, a, you know, it's all about customers. So, you know, the most important thing is transparency, serving the customers, and really just, just, just be very accommodating and realistic about the kind of deal that you can have with your investor or your acquirer. Very interesting. So, a question we'd like to ask all of our guests here, Javad, is what keeps you awake at night? You know, that's a really good question. I think the, the, the changing regulations in the industry,、uh, and, uh, and, and really we have the Jobs Act that came out、um, under、uh, President Obama, and now we have the expansion of that. So, and we're, we're seeing a lot of companies going public under、uh, Reggae Tier 2. And, and, and really understanding the different、um, opportunities that are available. So, not as much keep awake at night, but really one of the challenges is that a lot of the companies out there don't know that these、um, tools and these avenues exist for capital formation.、Um, you know, a lot of my discussions with these companies, I have to explain to them what a Reg A Plus is. So, You know, what, what really is challenging is these companies are struggling for capital formation, and here there are tools avail- available that potentially, potentially, you know, is the right fit for them. 
um, and I think introducing the opportunities to them is, is really important. And uh, you know, we we, we, we try to um, to educate as much as we can, but that's really um, something that you can also help with on to your listeners. You know, uh, we've had more than one uh, attorneys talk to us uh, on the show about Reg A and Reg D, and yeah. especially Reg A, uh, it's new and it's. Uh, very confusing, and talking to these attorneys does not always clarify it a whole lot. I can tell you that much, Javad. <laughs> so, Javad, second question we'd like to ask all of our guests, what book on investing would you recommend for our listeners? You know, I, I'm not a big book. Uh, well, I, I read books, but I'm, I'm, I'm much more uh, focused on, if I may, um, on uh, really your current publication, so the blogs are basically a really good source. Um, you know, your Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, and everything else. Now we live in a world that's very condensed and concise. So, you know, a lot of times you can read the books, but I, w- I would basically say just be in real time um, be aware of all the developments that are happening in the in, in the industry that you are in, be it financial services or anything else. But my biggest thing is, you know, Wall Street Journal, Financial Times. Um, you know, I, yeah, every morning I have to have it. <laughs> you know, I I have to have my daily fix of Wall Street Journal and my weekly fix of Barrons. That's uh, good. No question about it here, uh, Javad. And also, I I find uh, that YouTube's have been exceptionally helpful. I've Absolutely. been doing that the last few months. And there are great YouTubes on there, interviews with people who have written books, you know, authors of various types, all in the financial industry, and uh, that really are very, very helpful and can give a synopsis of a book. And I've been reading fewer books yeah. <laughs> and watching more YouTubes here. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's just, you know, migration towards the videos. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Javad, uh, give us your website and how people can get a hold of you here. Sure. Our uh, site is Bowstead1828.com, B-O-U-S-T-E-A-D, 1828.com, and uh, just go under team and uh, you can find me. So Bowstead1828.com, is there yeah. a quick story behind that? Um, you know, basically, Bowstead, Edward Bowstead started the Merchant Bank back in 1828. Really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Where, in, in England? In England, in wow. England, England, yeah. And uh, I was a young man at that time, <laughs> you know. Good for you. Yeah, I'm glad I asked that. I didn't realize the company had uh, that kind of uh, tradition and background here. Yes. So final words for our listeners here, Javad. You know, I think um, if the listeners are running a company that are is uh that that's an operating company i would really strongly um, urge them to explore um, institutional investors as a form of capital formation um, if they're looking for exits you know and un- try to understand a more broader group of buyers um, the purchase of whole foods by amazon is a clear example uh, the the normal uh, you know, norms are, are no longer there. They uh, you know they, they basically don't exist. If they're looking for if if they're the, if the listeners uh, running a fund and looking to increase assets and management, I would strongly urge to look not only domestically but internationally from you know uh, institutional investors like um, insurance firms, uh, insurance companies have a need, and also pensions as well as you know corporate venture capital firms. So uh, a couple of firms that we you're working with, you know, some of the big CVCs are investors in the fund. Very interesting. Well, Javad, thank you very much for joining us today. This has been a very, very different uh, conversation for us on Strategic Investor Radio and expanding our vision and our views and our opportunities into the investment banking world and institutional investors. So thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. Charlie, thanks for the opportunity and uh, appreciate uh, the whole interview. Thank you. So, again, we've been talking with Javad Ansari, Managing Director of uh, Bowsted Securities here in the studios. You've been listening to Strategic Investor Radio on OC Talk Radio. We'd love to have you contact us at info at strategicinvestorradio.com. And you can go to our website to hear podcasts of all our of, uh, interviews and shows, strategicinvestorradio.com. I'm Charlie Wright, wishing you all an enjoyable week and productive investing. Strategic Investor Radio is a production of OC Talk Radio and is provided for educational purposes only. 
Content of this program and the views of the guests should not be considered as recommendations by OC Talk Radio or investment advice from the host, Charlie Wright, or any other entity attached to this production. Investors should always consult qualified financial, investment, tax, or legal professionals prior to investing. 